All right, so we have our Dungeon Divers event as well as our Champion Training event. Whenever you're doing fusions and you don't have like a surplus of energy or you are extremely like free to play or a low spender or basically trying to conserve your energy, one of the best things you can do is actually double and triple dip if you can. So as you see, we have Dragon Tournament. I just showed you that we have the uh, two events going on. So what I want to share with you guys is a method that I think a lot of people do, and I do believe that many people know about this, but there are some of you who don't. So this is going to be directed more towards those of you who do not know about this technique to double or triple dip. What you're going to want to do is choose a stage that you know you can comfortably do with a solo farmer. I mean, technically, like, you could solo a dungeon with uh, any champion as long as you have the stats and, and the regen for it. But there are some champions who do it a lot better than others. Case in point, uh, Theodore is one that can solo as long as you just have him in regen and immortal or regen and something else. When it comes to solo champions, you're basically looking for survivability stats. And I'll, I'll delve into the stats here in a bit. Speed, survivability, and accuracy. Now, a lot of champions who do solo will rely on HP burns and poisons, but that's not the only way to do that. And I'm also going to talk about uh, picking the stage that you want to do, picking the, the level that you're going to want to do. And I'll try to go over as much as I can as it comes into my head, but I'm trying to really make this uh, a reasonably compact video. L let me just show you what I, what I mean. The reason you're going to want to use a solo god to do a certain dungeon is so that you can triple dip and take advantage and utilize your energy to the most efficient extent. You do not have to do hard. You can still do normal. Okay. So you could drop all the way down to 25. If you're not at 25, you could definitely drop down to 21. Basically what you're doing, depending on the champion that you have, that you intend to use to solo a stage, you're going to want to choose an affinity that you are stronger than. It's okay to go up against Void. Sometimes I decide to go against Void just to even things out. But oftentimes I choose a stage, especially early on. I try to choose a stage where I have a, a positive affinity to. So Theodore is weak against magic. We're not going to go up against magic because we're going to be weaker. We're, we can actually drop down. But you're going to want to do the best that you can do for the stages. So me, the best I can do currently is stage 8. All right. And I can get mythical gear as well as uh, five to six star gear. You can check over here if you don't know. Uh, if you do stage 21, five to six star gear, four to six star below stage 20. Um, so you're gonna wanna go as low as you could possibly go while still having the opportunities to get the best gear that you uh, can get. Cause you're gonna want to try to get, get as my, my camera seems a little bit off here. It's a constant battle with this. You're gonna wanna try and get good gear, right? Because essentially that means you're quadruple dripping, dripping, quadruple dipping, right? Because you're doing two events, you're doing the Dragon Tournament, and you're trying to get good gear out of it too. Think about what's best for your account, what your characters can do. Let's say you don't really care about the gear, you just want the points so you can do the fusion. There's nothing wrong with dropping, drop gears, drop gear and disappear, right? Drop gear and get out of Dragon and then get back to whatever you were doing. So with all those disclaimers out of the way, I, I just thought I would talk about those things just to cover all bases in case somebody might inquire or have these questions because I guarantee you somebody's going to have these questions. Now, uh, I've done guides on Theodore before. I think like one or two guides. But, oh wait, I'm in the wrong stage. Am I? Am I in the wrong stage? No. Yeah, no, I'm in the right stage. Okay, yeah, we're, we're stronger affinity. We're fine. This one takes a little bit longer because I do have to go up against two Battle Khazars. And in fact, since we're talking about that, Battle Khazar, if you have him, is another good solo dungeon farmer. Uh, a weaker version would be... Uh, who's the... Who's that epic? He used to be really strong. In fact, he was like comparable, comparable to Battle Khazar, but then they nerfed the crap out of him. Um, yeah, that that dude. Anyway, I, like I'm saying he can he can solo also, as long as you have the gear for it. But Battle Kazar is another great champion to solo stages if you have him. Because I know not everybody's gonna have Theodore. But I do know that if you don't have Theodore, 
a lot of you guys probably have Artak because he was a free giveaway champion. So if your Artak has been sitting in your vault, you might want to consider taking him out because he is somebody that I used to solo, not Dragon, but I do use him to solo Ice Golem. So he can definitely help you out there. Walking Tomb Dreng is another champion. I, I don't know. I've actually never tested to see which one would be faster. So we'll see. Corvus. I have Corvus on, on another account and... Uh, he's actually really good against the dragon. He does poisons just like Theodore, but he also places the decrease attack, which I, I like. Our attack is magic. He would go well against spirit. So let's find a spirit stage. Let's go against nine. I feel like that might be pushing it. I don't think my our attack is that strong to go hard nine. Let's try Let's just try stage six with our attack this time. I'm just going to show you guys. I, I do think this takes a little bit longer, but my other argument would be that because of Artax passive, he might be a tad stronger. So when you're looking at your solo champions, you definitely want somebody who brings the correct amount of debuffs. And, or not the correct amount, but the just the correct debuffs in general. So you're looking for champions that do HP burns or um, poisons. And those champions are going to place the debuffs and they pair very well against bosses because every time the HP burns tick or every time the poisons tick, you're doing a lot of damage. You're going to want to have them in regen. If you can get regen and immortal, that's going to be 18% heals. If it's just regen, then it's 15%. If it's bolster, 10% uh, respectively. But it boils down to the stats. Now, what are the stats that you're going to want to aim for? Because, um, I, you know, I already talked about the priority stats, right? I talked about having survivability stats, so HP and defense. I talked about having high speed. Essentially, what you're going to want to do, and because I don't have exact numbers yet, what you're going to want to do is mess around with it and, and see what you can do, because every account is going to be different. Your gear is going to be a lot different than my gear. My gear is going to be a lot different than somebody who can solo stage hard 10 um, in like 30 seconds. You know what I mean? Like, There's varying levels to this. So... I would try it out and see what works. And if it doesn't work, drop stages or just, you know, mess around with it uh, for a little bit. But what I look for as an end game player, I'm not saying this is what you need to look for, but just for reference, if you're wondering, what do I look for in terms of stats? I try to aim for a minimum of 240, 250 speed to begin with. The reason you want to go fast is because you want your champions to take it. Whoever that was just revived uh, revive everybody. I hate you. You want your champions, your solo champions, to take turns. You want them to go fast. And the reason you want them to go fast is because the more turns they take, the more heals they can proc. And the more heals you proc, the more you heal, and that helps you to stay alive. If you go too slow, your turns aren't going to be taken, and you're not going to get a lot of heals, or you're not going to get enough heals. The other thing on top of that is having the right blessing. The blessing isn't mandatory, but the blessing helps. Right now, Artak and Theodore have emergency heal on them, and they have a blood shield ring on them. I know some of you guys might, might not be able to attain that yet, and that's fine. You will get there eventually. What I would suggest, if you're in that situation, is just to drop stages. Remember, we're only trying, I'm only sharing this with you uh, so that you can try to do the fusion as efficiently as possible if all you care is about getting Wix, uh, Wixwell, or uh, whatever his name is. So... If you don't have the blood shield ring, if you don't have the blessings yet, just drop drop uh, stages until you find the stage that works best for you. We're here at the, the boss. Uh, Artak does place decrease attack. I'm confident that we're going to do well. I really like Artak. You know, I wasn't too high on him at first, but, you know, with his passive, he becomes extremely tanky, and I really like it. So, uh, Artak seems to be struggling a little bit here. Like, he, he looks, it looks iffy, is what I'm getting at. It doesn't look iffy with Teodor. Granted, I think Theodore is moving a little faster. Yeah, I'm not perfect. Things fail. But let's go ahead and run this with um, with Theodore, just so I can show you the difference. It's a lot faster. Theodore does it a lot faster. And I think the reason Theodore can do it a lot faster, too, is because he's placing poisons. Um, and multiple poisons, plus the poison sensitivity. Um, and I think he places the weekend also. And Theodore also places the increased speed to himself, so he's moving even faster. Uh, what I would do if you're trying to use Artek, as you as you saw, uh, I just failed with Artek. Now, if I wanted to drop stages, 
or I sorry, if I wanted to make Artak work and let's say I didn't have Teodor, or I wanted to use Artak and Walking Tomb Drang because Walk Tomb Walking Tomb Drang WTD places the HP burns, I would drop stages. I would drop stages until I found a stage that actually works. And that's what kind of, that's kind of what you have to do when you're doing raid, right? You keep trying things until it does work. So it just takes a little bit of um, trial and error, figuring it out for yourself, because I can only give you guys so much guidance, but um, ultimately it depends on on you and what's going to end up working for you. So yeah, uh, Teodor just chops through. I'm not even really worried about that. If you guys know any other solo gods or people who can solo, then uh, please let me know. Or if you have anything to teach me, please teach, because I'm always here to learn. Just because I'm behind a camera doesn't mean I know everything. Teodor. Regen and Immortal. High HP, a decent amount of defense. So what is high HP and what's a decent amount of defense? I, When I'm putting it in the optimizer, I put a minimum of 80k and I put a minimum of uh, 3500 defense. That's what I look for. And then high amounts of speed. I know that approaching 300 speed isn't like available to everybody. But um, like I said, I try to aim for a 240 to 250 speed. Faster, the better. Um, high amounts of accuracy because... Theodore does place the debuffs here. Emergency heal. Emergency heal. Whenever a shield is broken, removed, or expires, this champion, or Artak, because Artak has it as well, is going to heal by 3% of their max HP. The higher the blessing you have, the more healing uh, that you're going to be doing. Here are the masteries. These are my solo masteries. The main things you're going to want to look out for here are Cycle of Magic, uh, Master Hexer, and this is very important. Increase speed for each dead ally. You're going to want to go in with allies who are going to die. So Teodor or Artek or whomever you're going to use will move a lot faster up to 24 points of extra speed. So in theory, or not in theory, in practice, when he is in the dungeons, he's moving a lot faster. Take extra heals on the defense route. You're going to want to take improved parry. Decrease the damage received from critical hits by 8% because oftentimes I learned this from Sath. Uh, it's the crit hits that, that kill. You're going to want to take uh, Delay Death for some damage mitigation, take some counterattacks if you can, and Res helps to resist the debuffs. Let me show you Artak. Attack. He is... Yeah, he's going significantly slower. Now, he works for Ice Golem, but he's not going to work for Dragon, and I think in part due to the fact that he's going significantly slower, and he has a lot less HP than Teodor. I, I sort of put all my best gear in terms of uh, a solo champion on Tidor and Artak is kind of came second to me. So he's got less defense, less HP, less speed. Got more res, but yeah, he works for Ice Golem. Again, emergency heal and uh, same masteries. Let me show you uh, Let me show you guys Corvus. Corvus is a, another champion that I honestly don't see talked about too much, but I found him to be extremely useful, and I really like him. So I'll show you guys his stuff real quick. He does have a higher blessing, and he is in regen and perception. He places the poisons. Now, as I was talking about, the higher the blessing, the more heals you're going to do, and the just overall boost the stats that you have. So instead of 3%, he's getting a 6% heal every time the shield expires. 9%, then 15%, the higher the blessing. Basically the same masteries for Corvus. And let's go ahead and take him into... What stage am I doing here? Stage 9, Magic Beats. Yeah, so here, Magic Affinity versus Spirit Affinity. Affinity. Yeah, uh, he's actually pretty insane. I think... I think I want to do a full guide on, on Corvus. I actually use him in my Iron Twins team as well he just places so many poisons the poison sensitivity um just a lot of things going on here really like him really great champion so finally against the boss what he does here is place the decrease attack which i think is phenomenal and look at all those poisons look at that poison sensitivity and look at that he's increasing the duration of those poisons and poison sensitivities as well excellent champion i highly suggest that you find a champion that you can solo um these dungeons with so that you can do your tournaments and events and all that good stuff and there you go stage nine 